Hey everybody, Miranda here. I just wanted to come on really fast and share something with you um, that I've studied and researched. Um, as many of you know, I like to um, talk about and research political and cultural trends of the day and sort of give them, um, talk about them through a biblical worldview or a biblical perspective uh, and, and sort of, you know, compare and contrast what's popular, what's trending, you know, what the world says we should be supporting and listening to and, you know, sort of really dissecting it and putting a biblical lens on that um, as Christians, you know, should we support it? Should we listen to it? Um, I also like uncovering a lot of deception. As many of you know, we live in the age of deceit. And so a lot of the things that are going on in our country right now and the world right now are very deceptive. And uh, obviously the word tells us that Satan masks arrayed like an angel of light. So something that may look like light and love or something that may look uh, very good and a worthy cause on the outside when you unravel it and unpackage it and start to uh, see the ingredients, if you will, or see the uh, what's in it, uh, the packaging isn't always what it seems. And so this is something that I really um, uh, had a revelation of last year in 2020 during COVID, very difficult year for a lot of people. Uh, but for me, myself, um, it was a very enlightening year. It was, very, it was a year of growth. And I'm actually so thankful for that year. Uh, it was pretty amazing. Um, me and my husband, our journey through that year, how much we grew, how much we grew in the word, grew in our relationship with the Lord, and really uncovered and amassed a lot of deceptive things that we had believed or that we had um, uh, bought into. And the veil was torn and the blinders were taken off and we were able to see, not that we know everything, uh, we're still praying about things, figuring things out. But I just wanted to come on. Um, this is fresh on my mind because I've um, had some similar discussions with other people recently about this topic. But I wanted to shed some light on um, organizations, cultural trends that are going on in our communities. And unfortunately, the Christian community has bought into it and um, is sort of playing a role uh, in fueling this this lie, this deception. And that is um, the organization uh, Black Lives Matter. And I'm not talking about the statement, of course, Black Lives Matter. I'm not talking about the statement. I'm not talking, I'm not gonna talk about, you know, the black community as a whole. I'm not gonna talk about, you know, race issues. I'm literally going to just discuss the organization, what it stands for, who's behind it, and should Christians support it. So, um, originally we were told that this movement was born, uh, out of the concern for black Americans, for the black community, and, uh, as it relates to police brutality. So originally the organization, that's what they stood for, you know, helping black people, um, you know, and, and, uh, fueling the talks around police brutality and the things that were going on in the black community as it relates to policing. And so... Uh, that's their stated goal. That's their stated claims. But when you go onto their website, it can tell a little bit different story. And there's just some highlights and things that were of concern uh, to me when I went to their website. So when one checks out the herstory section of the BLM website, herstory don't get don't let that throw you off. That is a gender. Um, word play uh, instead of history. They're saying herstory because a lot of people think that history has the name H-I-S, his in there. And so that's um, somehow um, telling a story from his perspective, meaning male's perspective, not, not her perspective or women's perspective. And so somehow history is sexist because it's history instead of herstory. Um, so the herstory section of Black Lives Matter says that Black Lives Matter is an ideological and political intervention in a world where black lives are systematically and intentionally targeted for demise. So I just wanted you to pay attention to the words ideological and political intervention. Um, further, in the What We Believe section of the Black Lives Matter website, they highlight the work that they do to dismantle cisgender privilege 
and their desire to disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. So already, uh, their stated goals, I haven't really um, picked up anything that specifically talks about how they're going to better the black community, how that's done in relation to police brutality. Right now, it's um, a lot of ideological and political talk of intervention. Um, it's a lot of talk about um, some LGBTQ issues, gender issues, um, hierarchy issues between men and women. Um, and then disrupting the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. That means the traditional Western structure of a man and a woman and child having kids. And this particular structure, if you look at the data, if you look at the stats, which I have and I've done, um, this particular family structure statistically actually um, is the best for a child uh, to be successful in their in their life, um, you know, raising raising them above poverty, um, getting them to go to college, education, uh, grades going up, um, on, you know, less likely to join gangs, less likely to be on drugs, be addicted, um, you know, a host of things that raise a child to be better be, and to be a uh, contribution and to contribute to their society and to the community is a nuclear family structure because that's the way God set it up. God set it up that way from the beginning, and it's important to have the two figures in a healthy home for a healthy, young, rounded child to be well-rounded into their community and make a difference in the world. So to destroy that would mean that it would actually put more kids um, on the streets um, and behavioral issues, lower grades, kicked out of school. I mean, all of the statistics that go into... Uh, a child um, not doing good and and you know having more contact with the police um, can be contributed back to their home life their family life and obviously everything that I'm saying is said in love this isn't to condemn anybody who has been divorced or who didn't come from that home and family we live in a fallen world it is not perfect and our society has taken those morals those values and taken God out of our society and is trying to tell us what is established what is correct um, you know, how we should be living and a new family structure that we should have. And so, you know, no condemnation. Things are not perfect down here and the Lord can restore anything. Um, but statistically and general, those are the stats. So that those things are alarming so far. And that's just on the basic website of, of what they believe. Um, moreover, a video recently resurfaced of a 2015 interview with a BLM co-founder, Patrice Cullors, I hope I said that name right, where she reveals that many of those within the movement, including herself, consider themselves to be trained Marxists. So she says, quote, myself and Alicia, another um, organizer in particular, are trained organizers. We are trained Marxists and we are super versed on ideological theories. Uh, she goes on to say, we have some clear direction around where we want to make this movement, adding that she doesn't believe that the movement will fizzle out anytime soon. So again, by stating so far their, their stated goals and taking actual quotes from the co-founders, it seems that the movement is more about radicalizing America's youth or radicalizing, you know, America. Um, for the purpose of reshaping and dismantling our society as we know it in many ways, such as family, gender, race, all of these different areas um, through Marxist techniques, which is a classic Marxist technique if you ever study communism, socialism, um, Karl Marx himself, which I want to um, go into next. Um, Marxism... Uh, Karl Marx has made communism uh, mainstream. He was the one that really brought and shed light on the theory, the philosophy, what it is, uh, made it popular. A lot of people read his books and they study him. If you go to college, it's almost absolutely guaranteed that your child will come into contact with him, whether in college or before, due to the public education system. Um, but Marxists, a uh, well-known Thing that goes hand in hand with Marxism is atheism. And so I would like you to listen to some of these um, uh, quotes from Karl Marx. 
He says, I wish to avenge myself against the one, capital O, who rules above. Uh, the idea of God is the keynote of a perverted civilization. It must be destroyed. The first requisite for the happiness of people is the abol abolition, um, abolition of religion. Communism begins where atheism begins. So as you can see, unfortunately, our world has been built upon a foundation that directly defiles God. And, communis and so communism, atheism goes hand in hand together. Um, and then that, that, uh, that ideology is fueled by Marxism. And this organization's organizers are trained Marxists. So you just kind of start unraveling all of the different pieces and you kind of can tell underneath um, what that really is. So as Christians, how do we put this through a biblical worldview? Well, um, the packaging, a lot, of, a lot of Christians, they care. They care about people. They care about suffering. They care about, um, you know, other people. And so, yes, we want to help people. Um, yes, we, we don't like racism. Yes, we, you know, we're, we're all uh, precious and unique in God's sight. And so the love of God is obviously something that it will cure anything that ails us and will cure this issue. And so I have no problem with Christians wanting to talk about issues that are going on and how the love of God is the answer to that. But I don't see that conversation happening amongst mainstream, big um, religious leaders. Now, obviously people like myself say it, I have friends and family who say it, and I have little, you know, there's little podcasters and people that will, that will say that, but I'm talking about those people that are interviewed by Oprah. Um, they go on these talk shows and they want to talk about the race conversation. And none of them say, look, racism is from the devil. It's a divisive tactic by Satan, and we shouldn't be blinded and confused by these divisive tactics. It's deception. We don't need to buy into it. We need to love one another. God is the answer. He's the answer. And you know what? We need to put him back in our schools. You know what? We need to teach his principles and his precepts in the house and in the home and in the family. His morality, his values, his standards, his boundaries that he set for his people is what's going to make this country better, is what's going to make the family better. Better. But they don't say those things because those things are um, hard. Those things require accountability. Those things require responsibility. So we keep the conversation of, you know, our historical past. We keep the conversation with, you know, what people feel and what people, you know, what, what we see the media say, what we see other, you know, people say, other people's opinions, other people's interpretations, whether wrong or right. So we keep the conversation trendy. We keep the conversation, um, what everybody else is saying, what everybody else is, what the world's viewpoint is on the situation. We just sit down and perpetuate the same talking points, the same trendy hashtags, and we don't really get to the root of the problem because the root of the problem is the God. The root of the problem requires people to change. The root of the God, the root of the problem requires people to repent and actually turn back from God. And it's this God, this generation that's causing this stuff in the first place. And so that is my opinion. Um, take it or leave it, pray about it. Um, you know, use your discernment. I just want, I just wanted to point these things out. You could go even deeper with this in terms of who funds this organization and the funders of the organization definitely aren't Christians. Um, they do, you know, everything that they stand for is godless. Everything they stand for is not, um, anything that he wants us to, um, have in our life or spend our money on or support. And, you know, if you really want to dig down deep, a lot of these organizations, Planned Parenthood, Black Lives Matter, any kind of social justice trendy organization that pops up, they're all fueled and funded by the same people. It's the same beast. If you could, you know, picture a hierarchy and all these tentacles and then all of the organizations underneath, they all kind of go up and are fed by the same beast. However you want to say it, however you want to call it. It's just a divisive tactic tool of the day to disrupt a a moral you know once once moral once founded upon god society and to reshape it and return it for the purpose of satan and his plans 
Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. So again, it's not about the statement or the Black Lives Matter. It's not about not caring for people. And if you really want to find, if you really have a heart for this issue and you do want to find people and you do want to help children who are disadvantaged, there are a lot of nonprofits, a lot of charities that try, that give these um, kids scholarships, that help push these kids forward in education, um, that help train up fatherless kids uh, who don't have fathers and try to give them a firm foundation to help them forgive, to help them, um, you know, um, work through their past mistakes and work through the hurts and the things that they've gone through to reshape them into a better man, into a better woman, a better person for our society. So there are really great organizations out there who do this work like this, that your money would be spent more and you would know that it would go to that specific purpose. The money to Black Lives Matter, they don't tell you where it goes to. And in fact, in 2020, if you were to click on the donate to Black Lives Matter, it sent you directly to the Biden-Harris campaign. That's it. So how do I know by donating to the Biden-Harris campaign that that money that I just donated to this organization is going to help a black person in need? You don't know. There's no, there's no way to uh, you know, uh, account for that. So <clears throat> this video is just to just to warn people, use your use your discerning of spirits. Ask the Holy Spirit, you know, pray in the spirit. You you know, be discerning um, who we're getting behind, who we're 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 really championing. Um, when you say Black Lives Matter, when you do the hashtags, when you have this conversation, who are you supporting and who are you funding? The people who hate you and actually want to see your demise and want to see atheism and want to see Marxism and want to see all these things come to pass who don't care about Christians at all? Are you funding, fueling your own demise? So that's just what I want to get people to think about. Um, so until next time, see you later.